Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. I hope everybody's having uh, a great week midways through the week. Hopefully you are on schedule for whatever your goals were for this week. If not, keep grinding, keep pushing, keep knowing that those seeds that you plant and cultivate uh, and nurture will bring forth a harvest. Uh, be aware of your gestation period. Be aware of other things that may be negative influencing the progress but never quit, never give up. And I'm going to leave you on that. Also, uh, for those of you who are new, there's always going to be resources in the description box that you can take advantage of, uh, look through and see what's going on. We have a number of courses uh, that are self-paced that you can get and actually walk yourself through there. Also, that you can work directly with yours truly uh, in uh achieving your goals. And what I want to talk to you about today is in essence, self-love. I want to actually kind of take you down a very quick uh, journey into the mind of the Visionetics Institute, how I came about uh, creating the Visionetics Institute, what, the, what Visionetics is and why it's so important. Um, I'm going to start with a very trans transparent um, uh, moment. And uh, I try to do this because there are so many people that put uh, the idea out that success happens in a vacuum, that uh, success is uh, all encompassing once you achieve it, um, that success comes without risks, success comes without setbacks. I can tell you that uh, doing what I do comes with its um, emotional and psychological challenges because as a person who is, quote, a motivational speaker, uh, a, pers a consultant, uh, a life strategist, uh, even a life coach, uh, you don't get to have an off day. You don't get to immerse yourself into what's going on in your life. You have to wake up every day and answer the bell. You have to wake up every day with a smile on your face. You have to wake up every day and know that people are going to be counting on you to deliver what they need you to deliver, what they've paid you to deliver. And that this demand does not give way to what's going on in your life. Uh, those of you who know me know that there have been some challenges uh, health wise and with uh, a couple of the issues with the business. Uh, nothing that's long term, but definitely something that's intensive, uh, both health wise and with the business. And that's never a good thing <laughs> where uh, you, you're dealing with health issues and you also need it 100 percent on deck. But it happens in life. And that's what I want to get you to understand. Life does not get to a point where you don't have to wake up and answer the bell when you don't feel like it. That's the moments that character is built. That's the moments that uh, that determine the difference between those who win and those who don't. Anybody can get up when everything's going right. Anybody can smile when all the things are done the way they need to be done. Anybody can sit up and raise their hand and talk about how grateful they are when all the bills are paid and everything is going the way that it should be in the relationships that you have with your friends and your, your wife and your children and your husband and your children, whatever. Anybody can sit up and have a smile and be jovial and have all this going on during that time. It is when things aren't going the way you think they should be, that you wake up every day and you carry yourself in a manner that reflects that it is. It's not that you're in denial, it's that you know something better is coming. It's that you've been around long enough to know that trouble don't last always. It's that you understand that if you keep grinding, you keep doing what you're doing, keep doing what you're passionate about, keep doing what you believe that things are going to change. And you keep working, you keep doing it, you keep understanding that if I give in to this moment, the moment becomes bigger. If I give in to this moment, the moment becomes broader. If I give in to this moment, the moment becomes stronger. So what must I do? 
I must sit up and understand that this is just a moment. I'm telling you that I've had these through my life where you get to a point and everything around you is contradictory to your own expressions of faith. It's going to happen. I don't care. Don't let anybody tell you that. Like I said, I've counseled pastors, pastors of mega churches. I've counseled them and I haven't seen one who hasn't dealt with depression at least once. Why? You're carrying the weight and burden. If you are a good leader, you're carrying the weights and burdens of your flock on your shoulder. That's a lot of darkness. It's a lot of people going through a lot of things. And so you can pretend for so long before the weight of that comes and it starts to weigh you down. You've got to understand that these moments are coming and you've got to be prepared to move beyond them. And you cannot give them the uh, gravity of being everything and anything and all things in your life. You've got to understand that, that no matter what's going on in the business, there's a reason to smile. No matter what's going on in the home, there's reasons to smile. No matter what's going on between you uh, and mom and dad, there's a reason to smile. You gotta understand that you gotta find a reason to smile. And with me, I, I don't have the option of waking up and having a bad day. So I have to wake up, look at everything that I'm dealing with and still walk out and deliver because people depend on that. And that's my passion and that's my purpose, but it comes at a price. But you've got to be uh, willing to understand that anything worth having comes at a price. See, we want the promise without the process. I've told you that so many times before. We want to be able to sit up. We got and We did all this. We got all that. I did that without ever having to walk through the valley, without ever having to build from the ground up, without ever having to go through dark moments and difficult times and delay. You wanna sit up and talk about having and, and accomplishing and achieving without talking about what it's gonna to take to get you there. Now, what, what, what it is with uh, Visionetics actually came from two uh, mammoth uh, personalities in psychology. Uh, back in the 70s and 80s. Dr. Dr. Maxwell Marx uh, is one, and uh, Guy Greenfield is the other. Guy Greenfield is the first place that I heard the word visionetics used, and it, it kind of disappeared after he kind of stepped away from the scene. And basically, it talks about self-image. Both men were very, very profound about the importance of understanding self-image. Uh, uh, you will hear me talk about the term label givers. Label givers are the people early in life uh, that have the ability to assign to you an identity. Your parents will either tell you you're beautiful and smart or you're dumb and you're stupid. I mean, that comes from both sides. And unfortunately, that's a reality for some kids is that their parents don't understand the power of their words and the way that they help their kids. You have secondary, you have primary label givers like parents and teachers you have secondary label givers who have less authority, but more access like peers, classmates, all of that, siblings, all of that's coming on. But at the end of the day, at some point, you're going to have to grapple with who you are on the inside. You're going to have to have the willingness to sit up and look and understand that if I constantly look outside of myself to define myself, I may never find the true nature or value of who I am. Other people's opinions should not be the source of your self-image or your self-esteem. You need to be able to look at yourself and see the gifting on the inside of you. You should be able to look at yourself and be aware of who you are and what you're capable of outside of the opinions of others. The minimal minded opinions of other people is never going to be what defines the successful because no matter how good you do something, how well you do it, how often you do it, how, how, how great it turns out, there's still going to be people who don't like you and will find something wrong with what you've done, find something negative in what you've done, and do everything in their power to put it out there. That's just simply how it is. You're going to have to look at yourself and you're going to be able to say, hey, look, this is what I'm doing. This is how I'm doing it. And I've got so much more inside of me. I have so much more that I'm capable of doing. Here, here's the other thing. And this is why I, was, I gave you the transparent moment in the beginning is because I'm going to come to you in six to eight weeks from now with a testimony of how I broke through this, this time. 
that's that's what I'm going to do. That's my promise to myself that I'm going to overcome what I'm facing right now. That's how I'm going to do it. But let me tell you something. When you're in the moment and you have people who are addressing you, see, a lot of people want to name you based on your moment. A lot of people, other people want to name you based on your past. There are going to be very few people who are going to want to look inside of you and observe and see and acknowledge the potential that you have to do exceptional, extraordinary things. They are going to either judge you by the moment you're in or where you come from, or what you've done in the past. Very few people are equipped to see into your future. And I'm not talking about prophets. I'm not talking about psychics. I'm talking about people who look at you and look beyond your moment, look beyond the fragility of the moment, look beyond the frustrations of the moment, look beyond where you're currently at or where you come from and say, man, that's something special. There are very few people. When you find them, you want to hold on to them because those are the people who are going to fan your flame. See, those are the people that when you light that flame of passion and you say, I'm about to go somewhere different in life, I'm about to do something better with myself, they're not going to bring up, well, all, you, you know you tried that before. You tried to start a business before. You know you failed that business. or You know no one else in your family has ever started a business. You know no one else in your family has a degree. You know no one else in your family has ever done this. You know you failed this twice. You know that that's really not your strong suit. You know that's not the type of person that you're going to want to have around you. Now pay attention to them and learn how to use that negative energy, transform it into positive energy, and motivate yourself by it. Look, they said I can't. They said I want. They said I did this. They said I did that. Watch me rise. I used to say this all the time. If you want to see me do something worthwhile, tell me I can't or tell me I, I'm not being realistic. Tell me I'm stuck in a bad moment. Then just step out of my way and watch me. See, it's not about the circumvention of difficult moments that will decide whether you are successful or not. It's about how you handle the controversy, how you handle the difficulty, how you handle the challenges. That's where champions are built in the midst of adversity, difficulty, frustration, setback, and the like. Anybody can smile and pump their chest out when things are going good. I, I'm not looking for the champion in the winning moments. I'm looking for the champions in the moment of defeat. I'm looking at how you handle defeat, how you handle failure. That's what's going to tell me how far you can go. How quickly do you fold? How quickly do you just give up? How quickly do you sit up and say, well, I tried. Maybe they're right. You need to really study successful people to get an understanding of what success really looks like. Because, see, you live in a world where everybody paints an illusion about success that does not even come close to standing next to uh, what, what success really is. See, success is all these little steps that you take towards a worthy goal. That's success. Success is the small things that most people won't see. Success is the time that you didn't feel good, but you got up anyway. Success is the time that you got told no four or five times and you kept going anyway. Success is the time you look up and you're 25, 35, 50,000, 100,000, 150,000 dollars in debt, and you don't know exactly how you're coming out of it, but you refuse to lay down and quit. You stand up, you square up, and you walk forward. That's when you are actually experiencing success without knowing it. See, people are looking at whether you hit the goals or not, and they've trained you to look at the goals. Keep living, keep fighting, keep applying yourself, keep doing what you're doing. You will hit the goal. It probably won't happen when you wanted it to because there's so much that goes into it that you probably didn't consider. And if you're like me, you set these unbelievably lofty goals 
that rarely come when you think they're going to come, but you believe it. So you work hard for it. So by the time you get there, you're not what you want to be, but you're damn sure not what you used to be. That's got to be the point that you make with yourself is that I'm going to wake up every morning and be a little better than I was yesterday. I'm going to wake up a little morning, be a little further along than I was yesterday. I'm not going to become distracted or deterred by the fact that I'm not where I think I ought to be because I thank God I'm not where I used to be. And that's how you got to think. If you start looking at what's not happening, you're going to give it power. If you start to look at how people are assessing you, you give them power. You're going to have to be able to look at yourself and say, yeah, there are some changes that I'm going to have to make. Yes, there are some evolutions that I need to take on. That's just a part of life. I'm not perfect. That's why I'm working on me. I'm not, I don't have everything. That's why I'm striving. If, if, if you had it all, you wouldn't be working towards something. So you got to give yourself the allowance of not being all there altogether. We are in a situation with social media where we have to present ourselves as being all there, having all the answers, knowing all the, uh, the outcomes, predicting everything with perfection and everything else. And what, what, what happens? It doesn't happen and then we feel small. We, we, we feel like we failed and we, we back into a corner and we just slide in hoping not to be noticed because it didn't turn out the way we thought it should. Well, that's life. It doesn't always turn out the way you want it to. What you've got to be willing to do is when it doesn't turn out, stand up and keep pushing. It's about perseverance. This isn't a sprint. This is about perseverance. This is about the willingness to get knocked down and get up. This is about the willingness to take some lumps and some bruises along the way. This is about the willingness to be laughed at and ridiculed. This is about the willingness for people to look at you and say you've lost your mind. You have to believe in something so great that people think you crazy. Hell, sometimes you're going to think you're crazy. but you can't be looking at what other people are saying. Everybody's judging you from their own experiences. And if they, one thing I can tell you, look at the people who are the naysayers in your life. How many of those people based on your own standards are highly successful? Let me, let me, let me, let me say that again. Look at the naysayers in your camp. The people that are telling you you can't. The people telling you you're overreaching. The people that are ridiculing you because you got some uh, extreme goals. The people that are sitting up basically uh, maligning you because you won't stay in the box. Now, how many of those people do you consider to be exceptionally or, or tremendously successful? I guarantee you're not one of them. Why? Successful, successful people don't spend their time tearing down other people who are trying to be successful. Successful people are too busy paving the road. And then you get those really beautiful successful people who don't just pave the road, they reach back and pull you along in their draft. They have positive things to say. They have, they have positive things. That they have words of wisdom. They have words of encouragement. They're speaking into your life things that you don't even right now accept. They are setting a standard that's above the one you are currently operating at. That is what successful people do. They give you, they inspire you, and they give you a reason to aspire for something greater. Really, truly successful people aren't tearing people down. They aren't attacking them. They aren't deriding them. They aren't bringing up all the past failures. Stop resting your whole, the whole weight of how you see yourself on the opinions of minimal minded people. I'm not saying don't open up to constructive criticism, but here's what I can tell you about constructive criticism. It always comes with uh, 
celebration and praise as well. Somebody who has constructive criticism will see your gifts and they'll say, man, you know, you do this really well. Hey man, you do this. You know, girl, you, you, you so awesome. And I really love how you do this. I do this here. There's this one thing I'm looking at though. And this is just me. And I'm wondering maybe if you did this a little differently, maybe if you did stop doing that or maybe whatever, but what I could tell you is you truly bless me. That's constructive criticism. I'm not telling you this to tear you down. I'm telling you this because you're so awesome. I want to see you be even more awesome. So I'm going to tell you some of the things I see that may be holding you back. You got to listen to that because they're telling you, hey, I see the gift. And maybe this is hindering you just a little bit. I see the gift. That's who you want. People who see the gift because people who see the gift will fan your flame. Those are the people you want. Look, I, I, I hope that I was able to bless you with something. I'm about to step off of here. Um, got a lot to do today. Today is my turnaround day. Um, to give you an idea of what a turnaround day is, it's the day where you sit up and you just simply declare, this is the day that all of this stuff that's been going wrong ends. No, it's not going to end in one big bang, but this is where I turn it around. This is where I stop letting it be such a weight on my shoulder. This is where I stop allowing it to occupy my mind. This is where I start taking step after step after step. If I've got to go into what I call a hell week, a hell week means I give an extra certain amount of hours a day to what I'm trying to accomplish on top of what I already do. And I'm up 430 in the morning every day. So whatever it is, but see, that's a day for me. That's what, what it is. You've got to have something that you can press the reset button with. My, 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 you know, I've got stuff that comes on, like the little light stuff. Somebody calls me and something's going with one of my uh, business deals or something's going with something else. That's something that I can reset on, you know, within 90 seconds. I try not to be in a bad in mental state more than 90 seconds. But then there are those things that are so huge that so much is riding on that even when you get yourself back in that state, it's still there. And this is my turnaround day. This is my turnaround day. And that's what you have to have in life. Because there are going to be bad days. There are going to be bad weeks. There will be bad months. You may even have a few bad years. That's I'm just being real with you. Because if you get out there and you think, man, you know, there would be a little something here every now and then. And that's it. And that big thing hits you and you can't get it off of you. And every time you look up, you'll start to think and it's there forever. And it's not. But it's gotten so big that it feels like it. You've got to know that there's something on the other side of that pain. Mm. There's something on the other side of your heartache. There's something on the other side of that struggle that's so awesome, that's so powerful. But you got to persevere because it's on the other side for a reason. See, the persevering through the thing is preparing you for the gift, the blessing, the reward, whatever you want to call it, on the other side. I dare you to stand up and declare in your life right now, no matter what the problem, I've got this. On that note, I'm going to get off here and I'm going to go get it. I wish you the best. As I always say, I am going to live my life on full so that whenever I leave this place, I die on eat. I'm challenging you to do the same thing. Again, check out the description box and whatever platform you're going to ultimately see this on. If you're watching this live with me right now, we're on Facebook. We'll look in the post box where the description uh, is and look at additional resources. And there are some resources out there for you. Uh, find the ones that work for you and go for it. Take some action in changing your life today. That's my challenge to you. On that note, I am out of here.